Hi, I'm Dan Dokipen Elliott, and welcome to this tech art tutorial on how to draw render targets during gameplay. We've seen how to detect mesh hits during gameplay, and we'll now see how we can use that information to trigger the drawing of materials into render targets. First, we'll need somewhere to place our assets. So I'll create a folder in the top level content section and call it damage. Then in there, I'm going to create a new material called mat underscore surface damage. This will be the material that's applied to the mesh in the world. Next, we will need our render target that we'll be drawing into, and I'll call that rt underscore damage. So in our damage material, let's create a base color texture by creating a texture sample node. And I'll choose one from the content browser, which is this t underscore ml rubber blue underscore d texture. And we want to read in that texture target. So create a texture sample node, and we'll set that one to read the render target we just created. The render target is black by default, and we're going to interpret the bright values that we put in the render as the damage areas. The reason that we want to do it that way is because of a technical reason, which I'll explain in a later video, so bear with me for the moment. So here, to make the bright areas dark and the dark areas bright, we can use a one minus node to negate the colors and effectively swap them round. Now, if we multiply the base color by the damage render target, the newly negated non-damaged white areas will multiply with one and stay unchanged, while the dark damage areas will multiply down the base color and make it appear damaged in a way. By default, because there's nothing in the render target yet, nowhere in the base color is being multiplied down. So now we need to put something in the render target. First of all, Let's go and change some settings in the render target to make it suitable for what we want to do. So I'll change the resolution to 1024 squared to make it higher resolution. And I'll also change it to a single channel red 16-bit float format so that we can save some GPU memory. This isn't usually an issue for a single texture. But when you start to get multiple textures, which is what we'll be doing later, you want to be careful about your target hardware's memory capacity. The last thing we need is a brush material, which is going to define what goes into the render target. Let's create that and call it mat underscore brush. In here, we're going to create a really simple brush, which is just going to sample another texture and draw it into the render target. So we have our sample node and we'll set the shading model to unlit. And that's the only thing that render targets support through the emissive slot. For the texture, I'm going to choose that static texture that I saved out conveniently in a previous video, and I'll plug that directly into the emissive slot of the material. So now we have a render target, which is blank, and a material on our mesh reading that render target. And now we're going to use the hit detection in the character blueprint to cause our brush to draw into the render target, which will hopefully make its way through to the final material on our mesh in the world that's reading it. We need to do a branch right after we've done our line trace, which is going to fire off one of two execution pins, depending on if the condition is given is true or false. The condition we'll give it is provided by the line trace node, which tells us whether we hit something or not. If there was something hit, the branch node will fire off the true execution pin. In this case, if it hit something, we want to draw the brush material into the render target so let's create the corresponding node that we saw earlier and choose our blank damage render target and newly created brush material. Now when we fire and hit the mesh, the drawing is triggered and we see the render target causing the base color to be multiplied down. And one issue though, which is that because the render target is a single channel, we have it being read from the RGB slot of the sample node. So it's assuming that the green and blue channels are zero. Whereas we want to sample from just the red channel to force it to use only that channel in the multiplication. And that's fixed our issue there. One more issue now though, is that this render target seems to be left in this permanent state of having something in it. But we would like it to be reset when we press play so that the level doesn't carry any previous state over from the last time it was played. So to fix that, we can call a function in the blueprint graph 
right after the begin play, which will do that for us. So find the begin play event node at the top of the graph and make some room and create a clear render target 2D node. Hook up the execution pins into the chain of nodes and now we just need to give it the render target that we want to clear. Now when we hit play, the target is cleared and we can trigger the drawing again with a fresh start. There are a couple of drawbacks to the way this is set up though. One of which is that any mesh hit will trigger the draw. The other is that we're currently only drawing this large texture directly in the center of the UV space, regardless of where we were aiming at. In the next video, we'll see how we can tackle the latter problem and cause the texture to draw in the right place under our crosshair from the player's point of view.